Thank you very much for attending this session. Um, the title that ChatGPT uh, suggested for this talk is From Micro to Mighty, a guide to customizing edge devices using Red Hat Device Edge. My name is uh, Ricardo Noriega. I'm a principal software engineer working in the edge computing team at the um, office of the CTO in Red Hat. And I'm uh, Miguel Angel Ajo, and I also work at his department. <laughs> we are teammates. So um, I'm going to give a little bit of a, a brief introduction of what is Edge Computing for us, um, how you can use Red Hat Device Edge to customize your, to customize your Edge devices by building um, certain type of images. Then Miguel we will talk about OS3, a technology that is very suitable for, for the edge. And then we will do a live demo. So let's see if we don't fail miserably. Um, so what makes the edge uh, different? We see that um, more and more devices are connected to the internet. And um, the trend is to put computing, uh, computing power closer to where the data is generated. And for us, it's basically uh, edge computing, right? We see this trend in, in many industries, like uh, healthcare, automotive, uh, defense, and so on. But the idea is also, um, we know that these scenarios are way different from what we are used to in, in the data center. But we would like to, to use them uh, to manage these kind of scenarios in the same way, more or less. So. Um, we, required, we have the same requirements, right? We have uh, ease of, ma ease of ma management, uh, security, especially in these environments where the devices might be located in remote locations and you know, uh, without physical barriers. Um, we need to manage these devices at scale uh, to be energy efficient. And the, the kind of peripherals that we connect to these devices are, are very heterogeneous, right? We have cameras, sensors, uh, actuators, and other human interfaces, and so on. So these are the type of devices that we, we use in edge computing, uh, usually single board computers or systems on chip, uh, that they are not expandable as servers, for example. There is usually no remote management interfaces like uh, we find in the data center. We need to, uh, these devices are located in resource constrained environments um, where we have to be very thoughtful of uh, power consumption, memory, uh, and so on. Uh, these are the, the limited resources that I'm talking about, uh, storage capacity. The network types are very different. Maybe LoRaWAN interfaces, 5G, um, or m maybe the network connection is unstable, or e even if it's, uh, it can be, you know, not present or, or in disconnected environment, right? Um, limited hardware, uh, very very limited in hardware in terms of cores and, and memory, and maybe one of these devices is connected to a battery that is powered by a solar panel and. And we need to be also uh, very energy efficient. So Red Hat has been working for years now in adapting OpenShift to different topologies and, and different environments. So we started from the standard cluster, well, before with uh, external LCD, but standard cluster. Then we created a compact cluster where control plane and compute nodes are in, in the same three nodes. Uh, then another topology was remote worker nodes, where we could place worker nodes somewhere else, uh, not near to the control plane, and then single node. And one year ago, actually, we presented, we introduced MicroShift in in the OpenShift Commons event. We uh, last October we announced uh, Red Hat Device Edge, which is the offering or the solution that combines an edge-optimized operating system with MicroShift as the lightweight uh, Kubernetes runtime. And what I'm going to show you now is the process that you can follow to customize, to create and customize uh, Red Hat Device Edge images. 
So for that, we have a tool, uh, not only for that, but we have a tool called Image Builder that you can download. It's a couple of packages. There is um, a plugin for Cockpit that you can uh, use as a uh, user interface, graphical user interface. And you can build uh, different uh, sets of images, typical um, RHEL, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but also uh, the edge-optimized operating system that I'm talking about. So the workflow basically is as follows. Is, uh, you add sources or repositories. Then you, you create a blueprint definition. A blueprint is basically like a recipe of how your image uh, is going to look like, which packages, uh, customizations, and so on. And then you build the OS tree. Uh, Miguel is going to talk more about OS tree, but it's basically a version control file system. So once you create uh, your OS tree that contains all the packages that, that you need for, for your Edge device, uh, you expose your OS tree, and then you can do two things. Or use a typical rel uh, ISO to point to that OS tree, and it will uh, install it. Or you can create with Image Builder a uh, uh, USB installer image to plug it into your devices, or also, you can build a raw disk to DD into your SD cards and, and so on. So this is more or less a high-level view of, of the workflow. The, um, so th this is a screenshot of the sources page of Image Builder. Uh, by default, it comes with two uh, repositories, two sources, which contain the basic uh, rail packages. And for this purpose, we have added two more. Uh, the Fast Data Path repository that contains OpenVSwitch, and uh, the OCP 4.12 uh, repository that contains Microshift. Microshift is just a, uh, well, one RPM, uh, a couple of RPMs, basically, with uh, its dependencies. But uh, with two of these sources, you will be able to install Microshift in your, um, in your image. Then. In the left side, you can see um, what is a blueprint definition. It's uh, written in a TOML format, and you can put name, description, version, uh, so on. And then you can choose the packages that you need in your Edge device. So once the image is produced, you can plug it into your Edge device. It will get installed, and, you will con and, and it will have all these uh, packages, uh, dependencies, and, and so on. Um, there is also a section for customizations. You can add uh, kernel arguments, uh, firewall uh, rules. Uh, you can enable system D services, uh, plenty of stuff. And one of the coolest features that is coming to Image Builder is that you can um, inject or embed container images into the image itself. So for these connected environments, it would be it's very suitable. In the right side, you can see the output types or the image types that you can build, Amazon AMI, um, QCOW, or um, plenty of others. But for us, the, the most important ones are the rel for edge commit, container, and installer, for example. The commit and container is basically the same. The commit is just a tar tarball file that contains the, the OS tree. And you will be responsible to expose it to your devices. And the container is basically uh, a terrible file that you can load into Docker or Podman, and uh, it will be automatically exposed. And then the installer uh, is basically to create this USB stick ISO that you can plug into your device, and it will get uh, installed. The OS3 settings is um, uh, basically as I mentioned before, it's a version control file system. So you can think about uh, it mo more or less like a Git repo. And you can choose where it, uh, it is exposed. Uh, the parent ID, in, in case you want to do an upgrade, you need the, the commit ID of the parent. So you can create a, a, a following version of, of the OS tree. And then a reference, which is like a branch in according to uh, Git. This is the package se section. Uh, as you see in the right side, it's Microsoft and OpenShift clients, but you can add more if you want. And then go ahead, Miguel. OK, yeah, so as my colleague uh, Ricardo was saying, OS3 
is um, like the Git version of um, the system image uh, management. Uh, it's it's being used in OpenShift already uh, under the hood. Uh, it, it's been there for, for a long time already. Uh, and it allows um, atomic upgrades of your system. You can download deltas of, of your file system and, and upgrade uh, in an atomic way. Also, the file system is... is <coughs> The system part of the file system is, is read-only. You will always, always have uh, read-write sections of, of the system. Uh, it's very lightweight for over-the-air updates, so this is very convenient for edge devices that maybe have a very low bandwidth um, allocation. And it's also, I mean, it's also able to do deduplication. It can manage. Uh, uh, the boot settings of, of your system, so when you switch to a new version, it's going to put the new kernel in, in the boot partition, and it's going to set up anything on the ATC directory that needs to be uh, updated. Uh, there is an image somewhere on the Red Hat documentation, which I th think, oh, it's it. and <laughs> it, you cannot see it perfectly there, but um, you have a, um, a repository where you are serving the OS3. Uh, normally, that will be H an HTTP server, uh, but there is work to make um, that also possible over container registry, so you don't need to set up your own infrastructure. Um, and the edge devices will consume uh, that repository. In this example, you can see uh, three devices. Uh, one of them already has all the Delta updates. One, uh, the other one, at some, at some point, updated one of the Deltas, and the other still is uh, consuming the the update. And yeah, with this very short introduction to S3, we can go into into the demo. <laughs> okay. We wanted to show you on the screen, uh, <laughs> Ricardo. <laughs> so th this is the device uh, that we have here is uh, a Jetson uh, Xavier, um, which is not completely supported, but it's what we had. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Budget Those problems. Are, yeah, budget. So in RHEL uh, 9.2, I think we will have uh, beta support for the Orin version of those boards, uh, so it's not very far. And I will show you uh, Microsoft run running here. Don't mind the restarts because every time you stop and start the board, uh, the pods will have to restart and reconciliate. Uh, but you can see the 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 minimal uh, OpenShift services that we run together with Microsoft for the storage, for network, and so on, and our application, which is running here. Um, I can show you, yeah, of course, the kernel is talking to me, because I'm, I'm connected via serial port to this world. Um, so we have our manifest in manifests in the ATC uh, Microsoft manifests directory. Uh, you can see a customization file in here, like uh, with the namespace, deployment, the service, an MDNS route, and then a, a, <laughs> a fix up uh, that we had to make because we are running on top of uh, Fedora at this point. Uh, it's, it's like an extreme uh, customization that Ricardo uh, made with Image Builder, which is also possible. You can, I mean, you can uh, use Fedora or switch the kernel, things like that. And and we had to do it for for the demo until we ha we have a, a running rel 9.2 that we can use. So, um, sorry, just um, f so for this demo, we have created this uh, ISO installer image that contains its uh, base Fedora. Um, uh, 37, 37. Uh, operating system, plus the NVIDIA drivers for uh, the GPUs of this board, 
plus the container runtime, plus Microsoft, everything uh, in a USB installer that we plugged, and then everything is there. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> so, if we look at the, at the routes, uh, we see that we have exposed a uh, Whisper local route uh, that it's been exposed via MDNS. Uh, and if we reload, uh, so this was before, uh, I if we reload the demo, we can see that we have our uh, web application running in there. So just to show you very quickly, we have a, a small web application with a uh, JavaScript runtime that is waiting for audio, then sending it via post to the back to the server, and the server is just running the, the OpenAI Whisper model, uh, which is we are not data and data scientists, but we wanted to put something nice that you could see here. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's running, and for every transcription request, it's getting the audio, transcribing it, and, and returning it. If, if there is audio, if, uh, it will be returned to the, to, br to the browser. And we also have liveness and readiness, because sometimes, I mean, this is a little bit memory tight for, for this model, and sometimes it could crash. So we use that uh, uh, capability of uh, OpenShift to, to monitor the applications and recover. So if we start recording, um, the, the web application will, will listen if the demo god, gods are, are, <laughs> are happy with us. Maybe they are not. Oh, yeah, they are. So the model um, will start transcribing <laughs> whatever I say. Maybe uh, it will do a good job. It will not. The model also has a, a translation flag. So si hablo en español, lo debería traducir al inglés. Este público es muy simpático y son todos muy guapos. <laughs> so, and uh, to give you an idea of, I mean, how, okay, how well this runs, I will do it very quickly. You can see side by side. Um, the same application that is running on my on my laptop, because this is the something nice of uh, um, of, of working with OpenShift. You can you can it's very easy to run your application anywhere. Um, well, I, probably the the <laughs> the network of the board uh, just crashed because it's not supported and they have a bug on this specific <laughs> version of the board and this is why they are not supporting it. <laughs> anyway, so we have thirty mini uh, thirty seconds for questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.